Okay guys, in this uh, video segment, we're gonna talk about phase diagrams and how they work within this unit. So first thing we need to take a look at is actually an example of a phase diagram. So if we look here, we see that on any given pressure, any given temperature, we actually can draw in the regions where a substance would be a solid, liquid, or vapor, or a gas. Okay, so this is a little different than probably you thought of before going to this unit, where you thought that these three states of matter were only dependent on temperature. But the reality is, the ratio relationship between pressure and temperature. Now if you notice, of the three, the one that seems to be most variable by uh, pressure is this gas one over here. So that, how that line kind of swoops down like this. So there are a couple of points on this diagram we want to take a look at. Uh, the first is called the triple point. This is kind of a magical place where you can get a solid, liquid, and gas all at the very same time. I'm going to actually show that to you today. Uh, up here is called the critical point. And this is the point at which you're going to basically, anything above here, up into this area here, we're talk, starting to, we're going to start talking about plasmas, uh, supercritical fluids, that kind of stuff. So we're going to stay out of this corner, but just so you kind of know that this is kind of a break point where the idea of a liquid and a gas kind of gets a little bit jumbled up in here. Okay. Now the different lines represent different things. So this line right here is your break point between being a solid and liquid. Okay. So we call this the melting point. Okay. Or it's also called the freezing point. This line is between liquid and vapor. So this is going to be your boiling point or your condensing point, okay, depending on which way you're going. So if you're going liquid to vapor, it's boiling. If you're going vapor back to liquid, it's condensing. Solid to liquid is freezing. Liquid to solid, I'm oh, sorry, solid to liquid is melting. Say that again, solid to liquid is melting. Liquid to solid is freezing. Now this is kind of a weird one down here. So when you go from a solid right to a vapor, okay, that does happen. Um, that's how we make snow in our world. Uh, it's also how carbon dioxide goes from dry ice to kind of that cloudy, white, eerie stuff that's uh, the, it's vapor, the carbon dioxide. When you go from solid to a vapor, we call that sublimation, okay? So that is a term you're responsible for. So to sublime or to undergo sublimation is a solid to a vapor. Now, if you reverse that process, going from vapor back to a solid, okay, uh, when you go from a vapor to a solid, like we do when it snows, uh, that's called deposition. Okay, so uh, terms you probably haven't seen before, but it's deposition in this direction, sublimation in that direction. Okay, um, so if we take a look, here is a video on kind of accessing this triple point. And there's no audio to it, so I'm actually going to talk over it as it kind of works here. So inside of here, um, we have tubule alcohol that is uh, being... Uh, put through a vacuum. So it's actually reducing pressure. So you don't see the vacuum in the, in the video, but we're actually reducing the pressure. So as you see, at some point, the pressure drops enough where we get it to boil, Okay, just like we did in class. Okay, so um, we now have a boiling alcohol. And as this thing is boiling, it works fine at first, but then what happens is after about 30 seconds, uh, something kind of unique happens here, that the actual boiling it actually stops. So if you notice here, it's going to actually stop boiling. Okay, and the reason why it's stopping, it actually hits that uh, that boiling point, and it starts to kind of be, get colder. Because as you are actually um, boiling, you're also cooling it down, right? Because it's a cooling process. So after two minutes, then you start to see this happen. Okay, so we actually see that it's actually starting to freeze up on our screen. Now it's also freezing, but wait, it's also boiling. Okay. So what you're seeing here is that triple point. This is the point at which we get both freezing, boiling, vaporization, deposition, all that stuff happening all at the same time. It's that, that magical spot where all three can exist at the same time. Now, because they're putting this through a vacuum, eventually it'll all turn to a solid. But we do get a chance to see solid, liquid, and gas all at the same time. Okay? Probably never seen something freeze and boil at the same time before. Okay? which makes sense because you've never actually messed with both temperature and pressure before in the system. So this only works because we're using a vacuum inside of this stuff. Okay. Now the next video is talking about carbon dioxide. We're going to form some liquid carbon dioxide by simply taking a hunk of solid carbon dioxide or dry ice and beating on it with a hammer. We want to uh, smash the dry ice into a really, really nice fine powder that uh, we're going to actually stick inside a container and build up about five atmospheres of pressure, turn it into a liquid. So in order to do this, we've got a small plastic pipette. We're going to snip the top end off so that we have a nice opening. That'll allow us to pack in a good amount of this uh, dry ice 
right inside there. We've got a pair of gloves on here so we don't touch the 109 degrees below zero dry ice. Get a really nice clump of solid carbon dioxide inside the bulb of the pipette. And in order to warm this up, we're going to use a, a glass of warm water. And to build up the five atmospheres of pressure, we'll simply crimp the top of the pipette with a pair of needle nose pliers. It's a little tricky with the gloves. It takes a little bit of work here, but we're going to seal the top nice and tight, hold it with a pair of pliers, and then simply dunk that pipette right into the warm water. Warm water will start to warm up the carbon dioxide and we'll see it changing right from a solid into a liquid and as we build up about five atmospheres of pressure the pipette's going to burst and instantly it'll go right back into that solid phase. So we've got some solid carbon dioxide right there. Okay so in this video what we see is something that normally does not happen in our world because we live under about one atmosphere of pressure and for carbon dioxide if you take a look at its phase diagram, now this is water, but for carbon dioxide, its phase diagram, its triple point, starts at about five atmospheres of pressure, whereas we live in one atmosphere of pressure, okay? So for our normal world, we would never see carbon dioxide's liquid phase. However, we can obviously pressurize that and generate that liquid phase, okay? So it's not that there isn't liquids for carbon dioxide, it's just that we don't normally have enough pressure to generate that. Now, if we take a look at water's uh, different kind of key points here, we see that at one atmosphere pressure, which is our normal environment, we cross over, that zero point is where it melts, is right here, and that 100 point is where it boils, right here. So notice, if we were to drop the pressure down, it actually would you know, melt a little bit higher temperature, and it would boil at a lower temperature. So as pressure drops, we actually can bring those melting points and those boiling points closer and closer together until we hit the triple point. Okay, uh, and then of course we have the critical points here for water also. Okay, so make sure that you're able to take a look at these phase diagrams and understand what happens at the barriers between solid and liquid, what this line represents, what this line represents, what this line represents, and these kind of key pieces here, triple point and critical point. Okay. When heat is applied to a... So we're going to end here. Uh, the next video segment actually takes you into this idea of phase changes. Thank you.